everybody. Today, we are going to show you our Rodebeck Groveton, New Hampshire factory. Here, we are building for you orange peels, RPAs, the 110 WGs. So follow along. Let's go see the factory. Hello, I'm Patrick Platt. I'm the production manager here in Groveton. I've been with the company since 2019, and I'm gonna take you on the tour. This is the administration office, the production office. Uh, this is where kinda everything gets started. We have our production support team. Jess Hicks is our planner. We have Sean Whiting over there. He's our robotics technician. And one of our foremen over here, Brian uh, Connery, does our sheening and painting. So a couple of the foremen are already on the floor, and so we can just keep moving along and, and uh, continue the job. So we're in the welding department. Everything starts here. We get the steel in from uh, Littleton, cut steel, rolled, uh, bent as it's needed uh, for the process. And as it comes over here, this is our first tack station. Uh, we do the RPAs, 045s here. They'll tack the head like uh, Dylan's doing here now. Once he's done tacking the head, he'll put it on the robot, run the process, and then and, and keep going back and forth depending on what the, the job calls for the day. But this is where this is where the Rotobeck power attachment starts, is right here. Yeah, so as we move down the line, it's pretty much the same thing. We do the RPAs here, the jaws of them. So the heads are done here, the jaws will be over here. We do the manual weld attack. And then he'll put that one on the robot. Once that one's set and going on the robot, he'll come back and he'll do the, the three finger side, tag the same thing again, and run it on the robot once he pulls the other one on. All of our next packing and welding stations create our orange peel grapples, the jaws. This starts basically play steel again uh, in kits. Our material handlers will kit all the parts needed for them to do what they need to do in the welding department. They take this kit and they start working egg and pieces and working their way into creating jobs. It's a very quick process for these guys now over here. So over here we have a set of four jaws that have been completely tacked, welded, gone through the blaster once. You can see down here there's a couple of repairs that our, our guys had to do, which is fine because that's why we do that process, you know. We want to make sure everything is done right before we get down to the machining side. So this one now, since it's done, we'll head down to the blaster again to get reblasted to get the, the glass off and then down onto the machining. This is the end of the welding line for the structural part. Right. So over here, we have the rotoblast system, and this it looks like to be a finished jaw. Right. Uh, and so what are we doing with this? Yeah, so this is our finished jaw from down on one of the, the tack stations and the robot weld stations. So as you can see, we have you know a little bit of glass in there. So they'll hook this up and they'll run it through the blaster. So the rotoblast, what it does is it takes off any impurities uh, it allows us to see the welds the proper way, and it helps when you get to the paint side, it helps it to, uh, the paint to adhere better to the, to the metal, to the steel. So now this one here is what it looks like when it's blasted. So it's not rusted anymore. It's a lot cleaner than it was before. And, and like I said, the surface is prepped for paint. From the post blast, we then move on to what we call our palette. Yeah, we machine the jaws over here. We also machine the heads. You know, this is its kind of how it starts out. Comes out of the blaster. It's ready for uh, ready for machining. I put the bolt patterns in, machining out where the bushings are going to go. So this side of the machine does all of the loading of the product. And then it has a rotation table where it turns. And the operator, which is located on this side of the machine, is doing all of the machines. And just like it works with our robots, these all run by programs, right? So any any different size head that goes in there has its own program. Any different size jaw has its own program to run that specific requirement. This is the end of the structural process. Now we'll look at accessories from our cylinder to our pin, uh, all made machines and put together right here at Rotorbeck Road. So we get the chrome, it's brought in and stored here. We have all different sizes of chrome for all different applications of pins, cylinder rods. It starts right down here. 
on the Nakamura. We'll take the chrome rod. Based on the, the job that they have to do, it cuts it off the rod, it does the threads on it. When they come out, like right here, we have a set of pins that are built, and then we have a set of rods that are built for one of the cylinders. We move into the next robot in the sequence. Robot one is a dual function robot because it'll weld the pin heads onto the pins here that are finished over off the Nakamura, and then it'll actually weld the rings on on the other side. So after it comes out of this robot, it looks like this. They put the, the ring on the side, and then they'll, they'll put it in the machine over here. We do all kinds of cylinders for the loaders, the RPAs, the OPs, everything is done on this line. And all of our cylinders and pins help all three of the factories. Yep. So they get sent to St. Justine, to Littleton, and we build with our own cylinders and pins right here. Right. So the next stop on our process is the NLX 6000. Yeah, so they'll take what's here, they'll put it in the machine, they'll do the face on the front end, and they'll drill the bolt holes in, tap the bolt holes in, and then they'll flip it around and they'll cut the, the, the tube to size based on the requirement uh, for the piece. And so over here is one that has come out of the process. Right. Yeah, so what he's doing here now is he's, he's taking, he's deburring the whole tube on the front end to make sure there's no high points of metal. Uh, he's going to the back end of it now to deburr the same thing. And, and that's the finished product after that's faced, cut to size on the other side, and that's what it looks like. So next in our process, if needed, yeah. we add the hydraulic return tube. Right, and, and most of those you'll find on the loaders. The loaders have the hydraulic return tube. There are some on the, uh, some of the grapples that have the hydraulic return tube, but that's an external. Uh, when we get down there a little bit further, we'll look at the, the internal hydraulic tube, the, the cylinder defense system that we have down there. After they leave this area, they move into the skiving and burnishing gear. What it does is it turns the inside to a kind of a mirror finish. It allows the seals to run properly. That it doesn't catch up on anything. We then take our product into Robot Rail 2. So this robot does two processes. The initial process is to tack the head to the jaw, make sure it's lined up straight. So the travel, when it throws in the cylinder, it's where it needs to be. And then they'll weld the, uh, they'll run a couple passes for the robot to weld the head to the rod there. And in this machine too, they also weld the heads onto the cylinders itself. And then it processes down to this line, down to the gun drill. The gun drill has one function really. It puts an internal chamber into the cylinder. So this is a finished product. The cylinder head is now welded on here. But what the gun drill does is it installs that internal chamber into the, into the cylinder itself for the, for the hydraulic return. You then take it to the last and final process on the machining line, and it goes into the old Mori. Right, and what the old Mori does, it takes the cylinder tube, and it basically finishes it up and gets it ready for the assembly process. So inside of this room, it's a controlled environment. The cylinders cannot have any dust, contaminant, debris inside the cylinder for the seals to work effectively. So we have built a room inside the factories. So once they roll in and the tubes come in here, they'll start building the tubes uh, with the pistons on the other side. They'll make everything together like Randy's doing over there. Uh, leak test them. They'll leak test these because they have water tubes on them. It's just a test to make sure it's a good weld and it's going to hold uh, pressure when they're, when they're pressurized on the machine. So after all of our manufacturing processes are done, from structural to accessories, we then bring everything into the paint prep area. We're prepping the surface for paint. So in here, it's as simple as spraying it down with soap and, and washing off any residue that, that would keep the paint from adhering to the, to the metal. After it gets done with its bath, they will bring these parts out and further prep it with a little bit of tape. And right, they'll, they'll tape off what they need to tape off to keep water from getting into anything. And then when that's all ready, it goes through the doors into the paint. This is where they do any last final inspections on the part and then they spray it. Depending on what the customer wants, it's either gonna be green or black. It's what we paint here at, at Grove. After we get done painting, we take everything out and we stage it in drying. 
there's really a couple of different spots that we have stuff drying in. So over here we have our rotation drying on the rotation drying rack here. We have drying racks for the cylinders. And then over here we have the jaw racks um, that will continue to dry after they're pulled off. And so once everything's put over here from the, from the paint booth, then we start into our, our final or sub-assembly. So a sub-assembly, we build the, the sub-assembly components. The technician will build them up either a two-section or three-section, depending on what the, the application calls for. And these are generally go for our RPAs, the rotor back power attachments. They have the motors that they build up with them too. So this is all, all RPA right here. And then everything kind of goes on. I mean, the, he'll assemble these cylinders here. He'll put the protectors on down here and then put all the bolts and, and everything in to, to make it a full unit and prep these for the final assembly down here. We have our pin drying rack and our pin prep rack over here. That they, she'll, she'll dip the pins, she'll uh, let them dry, and then once they're ready, they'll actually go down here. She'll kit the parts up for these guys. So in this area, we also do kitting, like in our welding side. Right, so it's important to do the kitting because like, like it normally does, it, it gives us time back. So she'll kit up to all the parts. Everything that goes on, either an RPA or a grapple, or an 045 is kitted and put on these carts, ready to go. And it really, it does save a bunch of time. So after we finish our sub assembly, so we'll get into the main assembly of the grapple. Finishing up an RPA here. It's an RPA 3045 with a saw on it. So it's gonna have a section three. So we'll end up, once they're done here, they'll put the saw on and they'll test the saw along with testing the unit at the same time. You know, moving down, we got a OP5 half close. So the half close allows us to get more material in, the customer get more material in the jaw when they're doing their work. So they'll hook it up to the hydraulics and they'll, they'll run the throw on the jaws to make sure it's, it's opening and closing, making sure that and this is where you actually test the cylinders as well. So we'll make sure the cylinders are operating properly and make sure that, you know, it's gonna go out to the customer the right way. Then this next one has a magnet on the bottom. So it's one of our mag grabs. It's used a lot in scrap yards, uh, primarily, and it, it, it's uh, something that's been working well for them for a while. After we get done building all of our grapples, our grapples get moved into the transitional period between assembly and shipping. And so in this period, this is where we have our quality come through and do the final inspection from the assembly process. Our quality guy, he has a checklist that he generally goes over, and once that's all taken care of, He'll sign it off, we'll assign the serial number, and it's ready to go. We then come down into the shipping department. Their job is to get this ready to send out to the customer. So they're going to lay this grapple down on a skid. This is it, this is a final process. Now we just have to send our grapples out to you. This concludes our Rotebeck factory tour of the Broken Factory. Thank you for joining us today. We really enjoyed taking you through our process. We're very proud of the work that we put into every single one of the grapples we provide to the customer. Yeah, we appreciate you stopping by and kind of see what we do in this little factory in the woods, building big things, making big things happen. Always proud to be built in the USA. Thanks for coming. <laughs>